Hi everyone, a very good morning to all of you. I am Gulabsa, your mentor for Finance Current Affairs and I welcome you once again to another session of RBI 247 whereby on a regular basis we discuss the current financial happenings around us. And for today we have two very important news articles that we are going to talk about and discuss in this very video. Starting with the first one, the first one talks about certain amendments that has been approved by the regulator of the insurance sector that is IRDAI. So, uski kuch amendments wo lekar aaye the that has been approved by the regulator. So, uske baare mein padhenge. And the second news talks about the operationalization of central bank digital currency that too in the retail sector. Now for the second news, I want to give you a little bit of information. The information is that during the start of last month, that is November, which is now gone, starting with RBI has launched CBDC pilot project launch kiya tha for the wholesale segment and thereby it is also mentioned that it is also going to bring a pilot project for the operationalization of CBDC specifically for the retail segment and that's the reason why RBI has now launched the CBDC for the retail segment and this will be launched on December 1 that is today. So, today it will launch where RBI along with the participating banks and customers will try to test the uh, central bank digital currency, the digital rupee for the retail segment and will take up certain information from that or certain summary, certain, uh, certain summary from out of that ki kya result raha hai and by making those changes, adequate changes, this central bank digital currency or the digital rupee will be launched for all over the country. So throughout the country launch kiya jayega and I hope aapko background mil gaya hoga for this central bank digital currency. Now in today's video, we'll talk about the first news and for the second news, we are not going to talk about the concept behind central bank digital currency. The reason being, we have already talked about CBDC in two of our videos. So if you want to know more about CBDC, there you can get the entire information regarding CBDC. So let's get started with the very first news. The first news, as I have mentioned, talks about certain amendments that has been approved by IRDAI. So what are these amendments? So these amendments related to two things. First, rules on registering as an insurance company. So there were certain rules and these rules were very cumbersome. If any corporation or any entity wanted to register itself as an insurance company, so certain rules has been amended and it has been approved by the regulator of the insurance sector that is IRDA. The second talks about certain investment in the insurance company. So any person, any entity, any business or any corporation who wants to make investment in the insurance sector, unke liye kuch rules and regulations the, usme kuch amendments lie gaye hai. What are these amendments? We are going to study in the next slide. But before that, let us understand the reason, the rationale behind uh, what IRDAI has thought and why it, has, why it is bringing such amendments in the insurance sector. So we talk about the immediate reason. So the immediate reason or the consequence of this amendment would be that it is going to promote ease of doing business for the insurance sector as well as it will it is also going to simplify the process of setting up as an insurance company so jobi investors hai all those investors who want to invest into the insurance sector unke liye flexibility lai hai by amending the insurance sector regulations and secondly it has simplified the process for any entity that wants to set up as an insurance company in india and thereby it will result in providing more investment friendly atmosphere to the entities who wants to register themselves as an insurance company and to the investors who want to invest in the insurance sector. Now why is this investment friendly nature or the flexibility being provided? The major reason is that IRDI has its mission has its mission of insurance for all by 2047 whereby 
IRDI aims that by making use of the stakeholders involved in the insurance sector, it wants to penetrate the use of insurance product and services to the last person of the country. So, jitne bhi unserved, underserved, ya financially literate log nahi hai, un tak bhi insurance products pahunche. Iske liye IRDAI have, uh, is on its foot to complete or achieve or accomplish its mission on having insurance for all people in the country by 2047. And that's the reason why these flexibilities are being brought forward by the regulator. I hope you have understood this. Now, I have used a term called stakeholders involved in the insurance sector. So, there are three major stakeholders. The first stakeholder is the policy holder. Right? The policy is taking a stakeholder for insurance company. Ke liye, these are the consumers. Then we have the insurers, which we call insurance company. Bhi bolte hai, right? We have the insurance company. And finally, we have the intermediaries. Okay? So now, who are these intermediaries? So these are those companies which can be banks, which can be any corporation, any cooperative that helps the insurance company in marketing these insurance products as well as in selling these insurance products to the consumers or the policy holders. Now, in these three, if we want insurance for all, chahiye, then we need to ensure that the consumers are getting the right product as per their needs. So, whether they need a life insurance or a health cover, that depends. So, so the consumer or the policy holder should get the right product. As well as there should be a robust system that provides a proper grievance redressal mechanism for the policy holders. Similarly, for the insurance company, if we talk about, then they should have proper net capital with them so that they are able to meet the claims by the policy holders and these intermediaries should help. And these are the main entities who are going to make use of the insurance company products and mitigate and, uh, and penetrate these insurance products to the last people in the, to the last person in the country. So, these three major stakeholders are in any insurance sector. Ke. Now, moving forward and understanding what are the major amendments. So, here I have drawn a tabular representation whereby I will be telling you the current guidelines. What are the current guidelines relating to the insurance sector? Then, what are the new guidelines and what are the areas where these changes has been brought forward? First and foremost is investment through special purpose vehicle. Now, this special purpose vehicle hai, it is again an important term. Pehle isko hai. Special purpose vehicle ka matlab hota hai that any company, if it wants to make an investment or to take up a project, the parent company needs to create a subsidiary and that subsidiary is meant in order to invest in certain project or to take up certain temporary projects. So, if a parent company creates a subsidiary for a temporary project, that is known as a special purpose vehicle. Now, why is this created? This is created because agar, if the parent company has certain losses, then the obligation of the parent company will not be there on the subsidiary because the subsidiary in itself is a separate legal entity. So, it gets saved from any kind of obligation of the parent company. So, what was the current guideline or the current regulation? So, according to the current regulation, if any person, so if any person that is specifically the private equity fund. So, what are these private equity funds? So, these are those funds, these, these are those companies who tries to pool money from people, now these people could be insurance, uh, insurance sector, the pension sector or banks or any mutual funds, similar to the mutual funds, in sabse paise pool karte hai, and they make use of this money in order to make investment into private equity firms. 
सो so, आपको ये समझना होगा ये एक तरीके का फंड है दैट इज अ पूल्ड इन्वेस्टमेंट फंड वेर दे हैव टेकन इन्वेस्टमेंट फॉर एन नंबर ऑफ इन्वेस्टर्स और स्टेक होल्डर्स एंड नाउ दे मेक यूज ऑफ दिस फंड इन ऑर्डर टू फाइनेंस और इन ऑर्डर टू इन्वेस्ट इन अ प्राइवेट इक्विटी फॉर्म नाउ अब प्राइवेट इक्विटी फॉर्म क्या होता है प्राइवेट इक्विटी फॉर्म इज बेसिकली अ फॉर्म दैट ट्राइज टू टेक अप सर्टन कंपनी दैट इज परफॉर्मिंग वेल बट अभी वो इनिशियल स्टेज पे है so they take up that company change makes changes to the entire management of that company maybe changing the organization structure changing the management the top level officers even finding the right job for the right person and thereby they make that company profitable so that once this company is sold they are also getting the profit of that company theek hai to ye hote hain private equity firms so as of now if a private equity fund wanted to be a promoter in an insurance company in that case the private equity fund was required to have a special purpose vehicle ek subsidiary honi thi so that they can be considered as a promoter of the insurance company and if the private equity fund wanted to be just an investor in the insurance company in that case it can do so either directly through its parent company or through a special purpose vehicle iska kya matlab hua if any private equity fund wants to make investment into an insurance company as a promoter or as an investor in that case a special purpose vehicle was required and it was mandatory in case if you want to be the promoter now this has been done away with now any private equity fund who wants to be a promoter in an insurance company that can be done without the use of any kind of special purpose vehicle matlab aap directly hi promoter ban sakte ho kisi bhi insurance company ki and the use of special purpose vehicle has now been made optional and therefore this new amendment is providing flexibility to the private equity fund so that they they do not get into the hassle of making another subsidiary in order to make investment now they being as the parent company can directly invest in order to be a promoter of the insurance company i hope aapko first point samajh aa gaya hoga thoda sa technical hai but it's very simple sabse pehle special purpose vehicle ka matlab aapko clear hona chahiye creating another subsidiary additional subsidiary for a temporary project and private equity firms now private equity uh, private equity funds are those who makes investment in private equity firms aapko samajh aa gaya now if this private equity fund wants to be a promoter of the insurance sector then it is mandatory required that they have a special purpose vehicle but this has been done away with now this is optional second comes here that is threshold for being a promoter so if a single investor if one person wants to be a promoter in an insurance company the current guidelines said that they should have more than 10% of the stake of the insurance company but now if a, any single person wants to be a promoter in an insurance company at least or more than 25% stake is required in the insurance company so if a single investor is investing up to 25% of the shares of the company then the person will be considered as an investor and if it is more than 25% agar 26% bhi ho jata hai then they will be considered as a promoter of the insurance company promoters kon hote hain so the promoters are also known as the owner of the company theek hai owner in the sense jo company ko start karta hai that bears the preliminary expenses jo starting ke expenses hote hain ya jo logo ko encourage karte hain that we are forming this company who forms the company is known as the promoter of the company moving forward to the third amendments the third amendment talks about the promoter stake all together promoter ki stake kitni honi chahiye kisi bhi insurance company mein as of now the promoter stake was minimum of 50% but now this has been done away with in order to encourage more people to come and be an investor in your insurance company the promoter stake has been diluted and now only 26% is required that means kisi bhi insurance company mein the promoters can have 
can dilute their stake to 26% provided the insurance company has been performing well. It is solvent for the last five years. If for the five years, it has been satisfactorily solvent. That is, the debt to equity ratio is very ideal. Ya fir unke total assets to total liability ratio is very good. In that case, the promoters can reduce their stake to 26%. Also, this can be done only in case of any listed insurance company. So any listed insurance company that is performing well or satisfactorily and it is very much solvent for the last five years. In that case, the promoters can reduce the stake to 26%. I hope this is clear to you. Moving forward to the next amendment. So the next amendment talks about the number of tie-ups with corporate agents and corporate and insurance marketing firms. Again, two important terms. First term is corporate agent. CA ki baat kar rahe hai ya pe. And the second terms talk about insurance marketing firm. IMF. Agar hum corporate agents ki baat kar rahe hai. So this can be any intermediary who works for the interest of the insurance company and thereby they sell the products of the insurance company. So these are known as the corporate agents. So they are the corporate agents of the insurance company who are selling the products of the insurance company. If we talk about IMF, that is insurance marketing firms. Naam se hi clear hai. So these could be any corporation, any limited liability partnership, any cooperative that is taking up the business of marketing the insurance product of the insurance company. Apart from marketing, they also do other kind of stuff such as servicing the insurance products. Uske ilawa, they also provide or do marketing of the mutual funds ya fir pension related koi scheme hai to un sab ki marketing karte hain insurance marketing firms. As of now, the current guideline was any corporate agent can tie up with three insurers. Ab corporate agent ke case mein kya hai? They work for the interest of the company. So they are required to maintain the integrity of the company of the insurance company. For example, agar SBI life insurance corporation ki policy bech rahi hai, so it will work in the interest of LIC. So SBI as such can tie up with at most three insurers. Three insurers ke saath tie up kar sakta hai. LIC ke saath kar liya, Edelvis ke saath kar liya, aur ek kisi max insurance ke saath kar liya. Maximum three. But now this has been increased. Now corporate agents can tie up with nine insurers each in the general life and health insurance sectors. So life insurance sector mein, general insurance sector mein, aur health insurance sector mein nine tie-ups ho sakte hain corporate, kisi bhi corporate agent ki. Second comes the insurance marketing firms. Again, these terms are not very important from your exam perspective. Bas aapko ek idea rakhna hai, corporate agents works for the interest of the insurance company and they sell the insurance product. These insurance marketing firms actually markets the product and the, the reason that they market the product, the products get sold. Theek hai? Now, if you talk about the insurance market uh, marketing firms, they were allowed to tie up with just two insurers and now this limit has been increased to six across all the three line of business, that is life, general and health, okay, for distributing their insurance products. Now, if you talk about the IMF, that is the insurance marketing firms, their area of operation has also been widened, that is, if an insurance a marketing firm is registered in the state of Himachal Pradesh. Himachal Pradesh is in a district, mein, Kulu mein hai wo. then this insurance marketing firm is allowed to provide its services to the entire state of Himachal Pradesh. But Kulu mein karne ki zarud nahi hai, pure state ko wo cover kar sakta hai, in which it has been registered as an insurance marketing firm. So these are the major amendments that were introduced and approved by IRDAI. Or ye aapko summary batayegi, the whatever we have described, the threshold, the investment through special purpose vehicles, uh, subsidiary companies promoting insurance firms, as well as lock-in periods to be decided on the, base, on the basis of the age of the insurer. So if the insurance company is very old, then in that case, the lock-in period will be different. If it is newly commence, then the lock-in period will be different. So, ye sare cheeze yaha pe aapko summary provide kari hi. Apart from that, I've also provided you with the meaning of corporate agents and insurance marketing firm. Now, I hope you are liking the session as of now. 
in case if you want any more suggestions or if you want to have an analysis of the previous year papers or if you want to appear the test or the quizzes then you can do so by going on to our uh, app that is available on the google play store so make use of the app so that aapko ek hi jagah pe sari cheeze mil jaye now moving on to the next news as i have mentioned the next news talked about the operationalization of cbdc central bank digital currency in the retail segment now this we have already talked about this gives you a gist of the central bank digital currency so it is basically the digital format of the rupee the physical cash and coins that we are having and this cbdc or digital rupee is going to be a legal tender now there there are going to be two kinds of cbdc one will be account based that is the wholesale cbdc and it will and it is meant mainly for the banks so that inter bank settlements could be done the second is cbdc retail and this is going to be token based to ye aapka token based hone wala hai and here you can do both person to person transaction agar mujhe aapko kuch paise bhejne hain online using the digital rupee i can do so so transfers can be done or person to merchant if i am purchasing something at puma then i can make payment by making use of my digital rupee so that is known as p2m person to merchant talking about the choice so the choice that has been accepted for india is the intermediate model whereby the central bank will be issuing this will be showing the digital rupee and that digital rupee will be made available or accessible to the public by the intermediaries and these intermediaries is none other than the financial institutions such as the banks instrument design now ab question aata hai kya ye cbdc hai will it have certain kind of interest no hamara jo physical cash hai the physical cash does not carry any any interest right once you make the deposit then only you get an interest on those deposits but the physical cash the rupee the coin that you are having that does not contain any kind of interest similar is the case with digital rupee this instrument or the digital rupee is not going to carry any kind of interest and that's the reason why it is known as non remunerative aapko kisi kisam ka incentive nahi dega if you just hold it once you make the deposit then you can earn certain interest on it then comes the forms of cbdc which we have already talked about the wholesale one is account based and the retail one is token based abhi jo launch hua hai it is a token based cbdc for the retail segment moving forward so what is there in the news so since we know cbdc and i am assuming that you have a clear idea about the concept of cbdc here let's talk about what's there in news so the news says that rbi has recently announced that on 1st of december it is going to launch the first pilot project of cbdc for the retail segment retail segment ke liye launch kiya ja raha hai november 1 ko wholesale segment ke liye launch kiya gaya tha now why is this pilot project being launched so the main or the ultimate reason is to test or check the robustness of the entire process of the creation of digital rupee its distribution as well as the usage of the digital rupee in real time to kya feasible hai kitna robust hai that is going to be checked and tested by this pilot project and any and the different kinds of features of cbdc will be assessed and evaluated during this pilot phase and any learnings from this will be utilized so that future pilots could be made and this could be made accessible to the entire population of the country ab baat kare pilot this pilot project specifically about this pilot project so this pilot project will be cover covering certain locations only so kuch locations hain that has been identified by rbi in order to test the pilot projects and it is being done in a closed user group that is it will not be accessible to all the people it will just be accessible to certain participating banks and customers the so participating banks participating customers and the participating merchants theek hai talking about the e rupee the e rupee for the retail segment as i have mentioned it is going to be in the form of token so it will be in the form of digital token and it will represent a legal tender jaise hamare rupee notes hai 500 rupee notes 10 rupee notes since these are legal tender this digital rupee is also going to be a digital tender 
important feature of this pilot project that says that whatever token is going to be generated jo bhi digital token aapko diya jayega it will have the same denomination as that of the paper currency and coins that we are currently using agar 20 rupees ki coin hai then a token of 20 will be generated aisa nahi ki 30 rupees ke token generate kiya jayega if we have 2000 rupee note the maximum denomination note that we have in physical form the fiat money that we are having then it says that jo bhi token diya jayega the digital rupee that token will have a maximum denomination of 2000 so this point is very important yaad rakho aise questions statement form mein exam mein puche jate hain and let me tell you cbdc is a very very important topic and you must cover it cover it well because questions are sure short to be come from this topic kyunki bahut news mein hai ye and rbi has been doing its best to have this pilot project so that formally it could be launched for the entire country moving forward talking about the distribution so hame kaise milegi ya jo participating customers and merchants hai how are they going to get access of this e rupee so this e rupee will be distributed through intermediaries that is banks and users will be able to transact using this e rupee through a digital wallet so there are certain participating banks identified by rbi this banks will be providing the digital token to the participating customers and merchants and where are you going to keep this token so for that the bank will also be providing you with a digital wallet the participating bank will be providing you with a digital wallet this is paytm ka wallet hai waise banks aapko ek wallet provide karenge and those tokens could be stored on your mobile phones or your tabs or other devices theek hai now if we talk about transaction this i have already talked about this transactions can be done between p to p person to person or person to merchant if suppose i am at the puma store purchasing certain winter wears and i have to make payment i can do so by making use of the qr code that puma has there on its store to uske store pe jo qr code hoga i can make use i can scan the uh, qr code and make payment using the digital rupee next it says the features of digital rupee for the retail segment this i have already talked about it will have the same feature as that of cash that is from the point of view of safety trust the trust will be the same safety same rahegi and there is going to be settlement finality that is once it is generated ki ye payment honi hai then no matter what the payment will be done theek hai and as i have mentioned these e rupees since these are just just the digital format of the physical cash they are not going to carry any interest and this can be converted into other forms of money like deposits with bank agar bank mein aap deposit karoge then you can earn agar savings account hai to savings ke upar jo deposit pe interest milti hai that you will be getting on your digital rupee now let's talk about this now this i have taken it purposely because in order to remind you ki kisi bhi customer ke paas ab teen option hone wale hain theek hai the first option is to have cash now cash ki direct claim hoti hai central bank pe right you you have a direct claim because this cash or the money is being or is under the central bank of a country then you have the retail cbdc jo abhi pilotly pilot project ki tarah launch kiya gaya hai and third is you can have deposits with the bank now in case of deposits with bank you have a direct claim on the commercial bank and the commercial bank will have a claim with the central bank but in case of retail cbdc since cash ke case mein bhi rbi ke uh, the central bank the people the customer will have a direct claim on the central bank similarly in the case of retail cbdc the direct claim will be there on the central bank and not on the commercial bank that means the obligation to make the money available to you or make the payment to you rest with rest with the central bank and not the commercial bank i hope this is clear to you this is this was just to show that cash may physical or digital there is no difference it is just the same denomination same hai there is no interest that is going to be earned on idle cash or idle retail cbdc and they both have a direct claim on the central bank 
Now let's talk about the participating banks and the areas, the location that has been identified by RBI. Talking about the participating banks, so as of now, eight banks has been identified for phase-wise participation in the CBDC retail segment. And for the first phase, the first phase that is that is launched today, that is December 1, four banks say hum start karenge. Now, who all are these four banks? Now, these names are also important. The first four banks that will be testing the pilot digital rupee for the retail segment are SBI, Yes Bank, ICICI Bank and IDFC First Bank. And this is going, the, now the banks and the area, the location where these uh, retail CBDC will be launched through these banks, through these four banks are Mumbai, Delhi, Bengaluru and Bhubaneswar. So in charge cities may launch Hogi through these four banks. So this is the first phase of the pilot project on CBDC retail. Moving forward to the next, as I have said, Eight banks has been identified by RBI. Char first phase ke liye, char second phase ke liye. So for the second phase, we have Bank of Baroda. Then we have the Union Bank. We have HDFC Bank. And then we have the Kotak Mahindra Bank. Now these four banks will be testing the pilot project of uh, e-rupee for the retail segment. And this will be extended to not only the four cities, that is, Mumbai, Delhi, Bangalore and Bhubaneswar. It will also be extended to Ahmedabad, Gangtok, Guwahati, then Hyderabad, Indore, Kochi, Lucknow, Patna and Shimla. That means throughout the corners of India. India ke charo kono pe, northeast mein bhi, north mein bhi, south mein bhi, west mein bhi, har jaga launch kiya jayega. So again, the names of the banks are important. Kitne banks ko RBI ne identify kiya hai for the uh, CBDC pilot project that needs to be very clear to you. It is eight. Okay. So this was all that I wanted to discuss with you. I hope aapko samaj gaya hai. Now let's move forward to the questions. So we have four questions for you to be answered in the comment section. Please write it down in the comment section. Aapki bhalai hai. You are going to learn more because you are listening to the news. Then you are answering it in the comment section. So you have both the uh, so you will you retain the news for a longer period of time. Moving forward with the first question, the question says which of the following statement is correct regarding e-rupee? The first statement says the e-rupee for the retail segment would be in the form of digital token that represents the legal tender. The second statement says it would be issued in different denominations then that of paper currency and coins which are currently issued and third as of now transactions can be person to merchant only you need to identify the correct statements these are the five options available to you moving forward to the next question the question says which of the following statement is incorrect regarding cbdc e rupee for the retail pilot project first Users under this project will be able to transact with e-rupee retail through a digital wallet offered by the participating banks and stored on mobile phones or devices. Second, only four banks have been identified for participation in the CBDC pilot project. Now, they have not written phase 1, phase 2 nahi likha hai pilot project. Ka. So, here you need to be very careful. Theek hai? Third, this project will be operational all over the in, all over India. We have talked about locations. So, you will have clarity aayegi and you need to identify the incorrect statements. Moving forward to the third question for today. The question says, which of the following statement is correct regarding IRDAI recent amendments? That is the November 2022 amendments. It says the private equity funds can now directly put in money in insurance company and investment by them through special purpose vehicle will be optional. Second, under the current guidelines, the threshold for being promoter as a single investor is more than 20%. And third, IRDI has introduced provisions by which promoters will be allowed to dilute their stake down to 26% on condition that the insurer has a satisfactory solvency record for the preceding three years and is a listed entity. So, if you ask statements in the exam, mein hai, this is just so 
statements could be simple but these are longer so you take more time to answer the question and hence the question becomes difficult right so you need to answer the correct statement the correct answer in the comment section moving forward to the last question for today which says which of the following organization regulates the insurance business in india now such one marker question are repeatedly seen which are asked in the examination for example 2021 ke rbi phase 2 exam mein pucha gaya tha who is the regulator of the capital market we all know it sebi to aise questions bhi aap expect kar sakte ho examination mein so this was all that i wanted to discuss with you i hope aapko clear hain the answers are also shared over here in case if you have any feedback for us be it positive be it negative you can provide your detailed feedback if you are an enrolled student or over the discussion forum or if you are a youtube viewer of our courses then you can provide your feedback on this number 9994662525 right and also we also have a surprise for you and we are so we have received a lots of queries specific to the courses so we have a very big thing for you that will be revealed to you on this date that is 11th december 2022 so stay tuned for it and keep learning for the examination and excel in your paper thank you bye bye